I want to welcome you to another episode of Media from the Heart. Very special episode. My name is Ruth Hill, and I am your host. What makes this episode so special is, well, I could I could say, well, it's been a lifelong dream to interview Emmanuel Vaugier, since it seems like it's wanted to interview her for so long, and I've had this desire, and I've admired her from afar, and to actually have her on my program, that is a dream come true. There is no doubt in the world about it. Emmanuel is gorgeous, vivacious, talented, and has made the most amazing movies and shows. I wanted to be as sure, because we didn't have a whole lot of time when she came on my program, I want to be sure to read a little bit of her bio. I'm not going to read absolutely everything, but just to give you a taste of who she is. Emmanuel Vaugier is a versatile actor who simply sizzles when it comes to portraying those feisty female leads who like to stir things up a bit. She was in Mistresses. She may be best known for her popular role as Charlie Sheen's ex fiance Mia on the award-winning CBS comedy Two and a Half Men. And for three seasons, she also played Detective Jessica Angel on CSI NY, leaving fans devastated when her role came to an end. She was on Covert Affairs, The Mentalist, Master of Horrors, Veronica Mars, Smallville. Vaugier's feature film endeavors are impressive. Her credits include Saw 2, Saw 4, Secondhand Lions with Michael Caine and Robert Duvall, 40 Days and 40 Nights with Josh Hartnett, to name a few. One of the roles that Emmanuel connected most with was playing a woman who rescues animals in Susie's Hope, a role for which she won Best Actress at the Greensville International Film Festival. It's Christmas Carol, another starring role for Emmanuel opposite Carrie Fisher, Fisher, won her a Leo Award. Emmanuel also stars in Absolute Deception alongside Cuba Gooding Jr. Off screen, Emmanuel is an avid animal lover. A project that is very close to her heart is her own 501c3 charitable foundation, The Fluffball which raises money for various animal charities throughout her annual cocktail event. A dedicated equestrian, Emmanuel competes at a horse rescued from a situation of neglect. Emmanuel paints to express her creativity and contributes a major portion of her sales to the many charitable animal rescue organizations she supports. You might know her from the movie that she did with Luke Perry, Love in Paradise at Hallmark. We'll talk about that a little bit. And what really impressed me was the way that she was able to get in and answer the questions so skillfully and with such authenticity in spite of the short time that we had together. And you'll notice her sense of humor. I left a really great part in this interview that I remember at the time I was just so fascinated and amazed and enthralled with the way that she handled the situation. So you'll see that. It's very small, but trust me quite important and it stood out to me. So please sit back and enjoy my short but amazingly incredible interview with Emmanuel Vaugier. Enjoy. Well, I want to welcome you to a very special episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill, and I'm your host. And today I have the unbelievable, amazing, talented woman, Emmanuel Vaugier. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to have you here. I have been a huge fan for several years. Um, and so thank you so much for being here, Emmanuel. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I'm so glad. Um, so what, where I first know you and where some of my, some of my listeners and viewers are going to know you from is Hallmark. That's actually was my introduction to you. The movie you did with Luke Perry was my introduction to you. And so Love in Paradise. Yeah, that movie. Uh, so, but, but I know that you did some other Hallmark work before this. Isn't that right? Yes, I did a movie with Carrie Fisher, uh, which was a Christmas movie. Um, it's Christmas Carol, and uh, which was sort of a female spin on the um, the Scroo- Scrooge, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played the female version of Scrooge, and she played my ghost. <laughs> and yeah. um, and then and then the third being the one that uh, is coming out next month. Oh yes, and you are going to be playing opposite a very well known Hallmark actor. 
Uh, for those who know When Calls the Heart, they are going to know uh, Kevin Smith. Isn't that who your co-star is? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, had you had you had you ever met Kevin before you worked with this with the Kevin Smith? Before? No, I actually. I mean, I I knew who he was. I'd heard his name a million times. I yeah. I mean, he's a, a well-known um, Canadian actor, and uh, and I'd heard lovely things about him. But we'd never gotten a chance to work together. So this was the first time that I'd met him, and then got to work with him. And he's he's amazing. A lot of fun. Right. So, so can you tell us about this movie that's coming out um, on Hallmark very, very soon? Very special movie. What, what can you tell us about it? Uh, basically, I play a character from New York. Her name's Tara Kendall, and she is going through a bit of a nasty divorce, and she has a, a stepdaughter uh, <clears throat> that's sort of in the middle of it. And so she decides to take some time that she's very attached to and decides to take some time away from New York and away from her stepdaughter and her um, her ex husband, who's now with a new new woman, who's trying to bond with the child, and I keep kind of getting in the way. I decide to go back to Montana, where I went to horse camp, and uh, the story sort of unravels from there. Just to you know, ground myself, go to the countryside, and just kind of take some time for me. Okay, so what well, so. So are there any, was there, is there a really like special but behind the scenes moment for you, something that was really special about this movie for you? Um, getting to work with horses and animals in general. I mean, like I love horses. I have a horse of my own, obviously, and or not obviously, some might not know that. And, um, and what was actually really incredible, the, a cool little sort of behind the scenes tidbit, scenes tidbit was um, the horse that I ride in this movie is the same horse I rode with Luke Perry in that movie. <laughs> so, wow! The chestnut, and I, it's a chestnut gelding, and um, his name is Jazzway, Jazzy, and uh, he was actually Luke's one of Luke's favorite um, to ride. He was just an incredible horse, and um, I get to ride him again. Aww. So it's like ah. Oh, and oh, hold that. That was that's that's Luke. Um, <laughs> so I'm here. Um, and uh, and it's a chestnut gelding, which I have a chestnut mare. So <laughs> yeah, it all all little little tidbits that are kind of cool. Oh, that's so cool. That's 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 really exciting. And actually, one of the other things that I know about you that I so appreciate is you're very active um, in animal charities. In fact, you, uh, the, the fluff ball, isn't that what it's called? Yes. Um, so I have a foundation, a 501c3 called the fluff ball, and we're incorporated to, to do, to operate inside the United States at the moment, which I'm working on branching that out to other countries because mm -hmm. that would be in Canada. It'd be great to be able to do stuff here, mm -hmm. uh, but we got to do all the, you know, all the steps according to the, to the, the rules um but uh but yeah we basically up until the pandemic we were throwing an event every year to raise money and awareness for different animal charities so what i love is being able to not like it's not just one animal charity we can you know every year we can support a different um a different charity that does great work and especially like focus on the smaller charities that maybe don't get as much attention as the you know the the big the big ones that have a lot of funding Exactly. And actually, I, I actually have been a part of uh, watching that. I think it's actually, actually because of all this work that you've done with animal charities, that's when I really began to realize, I mean, I saw you in Hallmark, but then I saw you doing all this. And I actually have jumped in and I, I was just telling my, my virtual audience how I still have this shirt that I bought. <laughs> through oh. one of one of your fundraisers um, oh my gosh thank yeah. you that's awesome <laughs> I love hearing that <laughs> yeah I, I I gave it to my daughter for a while and then she gave it back to me and I was like oh and, I, and so she actually kind of knows who you are because of that my daughter is is uh, 19 right now but she 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 actually kind of has an idea of who you are because of that charity because we are passionate about animals we live in the country we live on five acres so we're oh, very nice. passionate very passionate about animal animals were yeah so i just want but i just am, am a, i'm so thrilled that you use your platform for things like that and i and i believe you also um isn't there a makeup line that you're also a part of uh, oh you? um so isadora is a company that i we we had a partnership uh for, for a period of time um where i did some stuff for them and and um and yeah, they're a great, they're a great company. They're cruelty free and okay. all those things. So it was, it was a natural sort of 
you know, alignment with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So Paula, I know you have a question. Would you like to come on and ask um, a question really fast to Emmanuel here? <laughs> Hi, Paula. I'm not very good. Hello. I, I, I have to talk fast because I had like three pages of questions <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm not from your, I always start out by saying I'm not from your world. Or I'm not from Ruth's world. I'm just looking in on you. And I don't know um, if you could just give it me a little bit of where you, how you started. I mean, did you go right from high school into college or uh, was acting always something you wanted to do or something else or? Um, acting was always something I, I like in second grade, I did a school play where I was an understudy and I, and one night that was like a Christmas pageant type thing. And, um, one, and I think it was like the part of a narrator angel or something, just like I had like three lines and, uh, the girl that for a couple of nights got sick. And so I got to, you know, I got to fill in. I was so excited. And I just had the time of my life just being out there on stage. And it was so exciting to me. And, um, that's where it started. And then I just did school plays and things throughout high school and, and, um, you know, through school and in high school, I had the opportunity to go overseas to model in Japan. So I did that. And basically for the, my 11th and 12th year, I traveled back and forth from overseas and did courses, did, uh, I, we were on a semester system. So I front loaded all of my courses into the first semester and would travel for the second semester. So I graduated a year early, um, doing that. And then went and then decided to stay put and, you know, do what I really love to do, is, which was acting. But the modeling, thing, I couldn't pass that up to be able to travel the world and and make money and, and sort of set myself up to be able to kind of take the time to take classes and do all that stuff um, to pursue acting. And that's that's when I, you know, sort of stayed put and did that. I didn't do, do the traditional college route or anything like that. Oh, wow. Um, it, have you, have you thought of, I mean, I have questions about movies, but have you ever thought if I can't do movie in, acting any longer, do you have a, a, something that you also like or a backup that not a backup because you're very, you know, you've done a lot, but, uh, a, something else that interests you? You know, not really. I mean, as far as I, I think it would be somewhere in the, in the industry in some capacity, whether it's uh, cre help, helping more behind the scenes and creating, writing, uh, producing. I've never really been one that wanted to direct necessarily. People have asked me that before and I, I it's not been something that I'm super passionate about doing or super interested. I, I have a huge respect for what directors do because they, they are there all the time <laughs> and long before and long after everyone else is gone. So um, I, my interests lie more in the producing end of things and finding properties and things like that. I think I would, but it would still be within the bounds of the industry of what I know. You were very lucky. I mean, when I s saw the list of all the different movies, <laughs> okay. Um, what you play in different types, science fiction, thrillers, comedies, emotion, or emotional ones, rom-com. Is there a preference? I mean, that, that you, or it uh, doesn't matter. It, well, I mean, each comes with its own kind of, uh, baggage shall you say shall we say you know like and and difficulties and then and also rewards um I kind of I like that I've been able to dabble in a bit of everything and, and have the variety in my career when it comes to what do I prefer doing I mean I love doing the sitcom world was so much fun for me uh and that you know happened later in my career uh I I love um I love doing the the Hallmark movies because they're just they're very they're always very wholesome and sweet and it's something that everyone can watch with their families and it kind of transcends like it just it, yeah it just reaches so many households and people in different ways and I, I can't tell you the amount of people that I, I'm just shocked like you know biker dudes with you know big burly you know like scary looking guys that are like I love Hallmark <laughs> <laughs> and that just makes me yeah. so happy <laughs> Um, you you played in quite a few dark movies, and I actually used the word baggage when I wrote my notices. Can you walk away from it, or do you carry that home with you? How do you just 
break away from some of them were really scary that I couldn't even watch the trailers <laughs> yeah I mean sometimes it does it stays with you and lingers a little bit like I've I've learned to be learned to sort of be able to let it go a bit more um easily it you know as the years went on but um there were times where it would take me like several weeks to like a month to shake you know just the energy and the baggage from that but I've picked up things to help me you know, help me through that meditation being one of them and um, being with the horses is also very helpful. So yeah, um, you, you um, were lucky to be with many actors and actresses like uh, in Five Wives, you, my goodness, you were with Rodney Dangerfield and, and Jerry Stiller and Andrew Dice Clay, um, and Molly Shannon. And then Dean Kane is my favorite one of my favorite ones and you were in the nanny for Christmas and that one. He's and, a and then, devil, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Carrie Fisher in, in the Christmas Carol. I mean, I watch any Carol movie I can watch. I love Scrooge and that the whole concept. And I, I watched you several times in that one and that, and, Sh and Shelley Long in the wedding chapel. I mean, you have to pinch yourself. I mean, you just really have been so many really good you know good actors is there one person you still would like to have a chance to work with Ooh, oh there's I mean there are many many there uh, and, you know uh, Robert Downey Jr Meryl Streep Brad Pitt would be although I, I <laughs> hear that he's quitting the business now how dare oh, he no. uh, <laughs> and um, oh gosh like uh Tom Cruise I just saw you know the new Top Gun and I was like oh my gosh like he's just a he's he is a machine that guy like he and he's good like and he just yeah I, like I, I admire his work ethic because he's got a that what he does requires a hundred and or a thousand percent of his entire being because mm -hmm. there he you have no outside life when you do what he's doing it's like wow and he does it well <laughs> you have to come back I gotta hold <laughs> I'll come back <laughs> <laughs> if you could if you could be in an old classic if you get the choice to be in an old classic movie what would it be Ooh, the wizard of oz <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that or, 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 I mean, I loved watching Annie when I was a kid, but I, I know the Wizard of Oz would be, would be lots of fun. Yeah. And, and like that being that I could like sing and things like that would also be helpful. <laughs> sing well, well. I'm just saying sing really well. <laughs> Very well. Okay. I had that on one of my questions. Do you sing? <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I like to sing, but I don't yeah. know if you'll ask anyone that's heard me sing and they're probably like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> But she oh, I'm, I'm so I'm so honored that I was able to ask you questions. You have to come back because I got a page. <laughs> she did, Absolutely, yeah, she, <clears throat> this, this, I would be happy to. Yeah. All yeah, right, yeah, thank yeah, you. Definitely. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you're you. welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Paula. All right. So as we wrap things up, and thank you, Emmanuel, for for for, for your time. I really do appreciate it. Um, so just so to wrap things up, I know we have this Hallmark movie, which. Could you remind me of what the name of the Hallmark movie is? I know I could look at my notes. Big Sky but... River. Big Sky River. I knew it was something like that. I didn't want to mess it up. So thank you. Okay. So Big Sky River, I know it's August 7th here in the States um, on Hallmark. And then is it the following week in Canada? It is on W Network on August 12th. I okay. Believe. Okay. I okay. So almost, it. yeah. So almost. Yes. I think it's on August 12th is, okay. um, is the on W Network okay. in Canada. Perfect. And do you have anything else that you want to be sure to mention as far as any other works that we can we can see you in that are either coming up or currently out? Um, at the moment, no. That what like, I'm sort of focusing on this, and then right. and also um, I'm hoping to be able to announce something um, new for the Fluff Ball Ooh. for 2023. So you know the the fluffball.com is where we will post, and also we our Twitter the Fluff Ball and uh, and Instagram the Fluff Ball event. Um, we'll keep people up to date once we get have more information. But I'm lo really looking forward to getting getting things going again because it's been. It's been too long. We, we've been doing some online stuff, but um, it's time for a, an in-person event and and to have that energy and that that fun again and to raise lots of money for animals. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that sounds awesome. We will certainly be we'll, we'll be tuning tuning in to Big Sky River, 
and then we'll be watching out for fluff ball because i love i love all your updates i get your updates and i will keep watching because i'm i'm excited whatever you're gonna announce so oh well thank you so much and thank you again for having me sorry we didn't have more time no no no, no. it's all right i'm glad that i got I had, you're a busy woman and i just appreciate that you took any time for me and this is a dream i've wanted you, i've wanted to chat with you for years so thank you oh well awesome. thank you i that's very flattering and thank you and thank you for making the time for me i know you have a busy busy schedule as well so uh but we made it happen <laughs> there you go all right well thank you so much and and uh bye everybody well we'll see you later Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. All right, All right. Well, how's that for a dream come true? I mean, does it get any better than Emmanuel Vaudier on my show? A woman I've admired for years through her charity work, her movies. She is vivacious. She is stunning. I literally cannot take my eyes off the woman when she's on the screen. And now we're going to see her on Hallmark again, Big Sky River, and she came on my program. I am truly honored. The woman is a legend as far as I'm concerned. And just the way that she conducted herself, the way that she answered questions, the authenticity, the inspiration, the kindness, the professionalism, I mean, the, and she's so versatile. I mean, I can hardly wait to see her in more movies, more shows. I feel like, although she's been in the business for a while, she's just getting started as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I just think this woman has so many great things that are going to be coming up and I can hardly wait to be a part of them. Because in watching what she does and getting to support her, I feel like I have a vested interest in her career. I really do feel that way. And I believe that's the way we should always feel. And when it comes to these actors and actresses that we admire, the people behind the scenes, we really feel like we become a part of their world. And that's what she has invited all of us to do. The way that she interacted with the fans, the way that she just got in and was, she never looked like she was in a hurry. Although I knew that we only had a short period of time. So I just want to thank all of you for tuning in to this episode. I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe rate and review on apple Podcasts, or if you're watching or listening on youtube thumbs up subscribe i really would appreciate it you guys have made my dreams come true this podcast i mean yeah emmanuel is my guest but trust me i realize that without you guys without my virtual audience my listeners my subscribers this program would not exist you guys have made it what it is and I cannot tell you that when I hear about how much my guests enjoy my people, my audience, it makes it so worthwhile. So please join the Facebook group, book group if you haven't. Love to have you come and be a part of one of the recordings. No matter what you do today, take some time for yourself. Breathe in the fresh air. Enjoy where you are. Enjoy some special moments. And if this makes you smile, let me know. I love all of you. God bless you. And have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. <laughs>